What's up friends and welcome back to my channel. So there's this new trend gaining traction in the fitness space that kind of caught me by surprise. Minimalist or barefoot shoes. Now at first I thought it was just like a weird new fashion statement but turns out there might be some scientific logic behind this zero drop look. So I looked into it further and I sought out the help of a pretty well-versed fitness expert to walk me through the different brands and all the different types of barefoot shoes out there because not all minimalist shoes are made equal. And I will get to that in just a sec. And so in this video, I'm gonna share with you everything I learned, including the key things you wanna look for when you're buying a pair, how to make the shoe transition and what that timeline looks like. And then finally, I think it's really important to address the why. So I'll walk you through the pros and the cons of barefoot shoes and share with you what might be considered some pretty radical thoughts about full support shoes and what they might actually mean for your long-term mobility. And as a quick side note, I'd love your help in picking out a pair of minimalist shoes for me to try for a more long-term review on this channel. Now, my fiance just got a pair of Flux, but I'm debating between those and Vivo Barefoot and Feel Grounds, but totally open to any other suggestions. So please leave a comment below and I'll probably buy whichever ones you guys seem most interested in me trying out. So that being said, let's start with the basics. What really is a minimalist shoe? Because there are a lot of minimalist aesthetic shoes out there like Allbirds and Rothy's and they're super low profile and even eco-friendly by design. But these, by definition, are not considered your classic minimalist or barefoot shoe. So then what is? Now I am certainly no shoe expert, but I do know someone who has dipped a toe or two into this whole flexible footwear space. So friends, I'd like you to meet Skip Kelly. A corrective exercise specialist by trade, Skip spent the last decade coaching people on injury prevention and recovery and is now the founder and CEO of a new muscle activation program called The Thrive Dojo. This is an incredible program focused around the mind, body, and muscle connection through a system called prehabbing. And I'll be talking a little bit more about my own experience with it in some future episodes. But for now, let's get back to the shoes and what Skip says you should be looking for when it comes to these barefoot styles. Your foot's like pretty flat and like unattractive you know, by shoe standards, right? So we want it to kind of resemble that platypus beak at the end, that flat bill. So the zero heel drop, the wide toe box, the extreme flexibility, not just this way, but also curving, because there's that big arch in the middle of our foot. We want all of that mobility to happen. And then we don't want the ankle support because the ankles should be able to move a little bit. So just to recap, you wanna be looking for a soft, bendable sole, little to no arch support, very roomy toe box, and zero drop sole, meaning the same thickness from your toe to your heel. Now, shoe soles can vary in thickness, but most people aim for somewhere between like two millimeters and eight millimeters, with two being like pretty much the closest thing to barefoot as possible. But if you're like me and say you've been wearing thick ass shoes with inserts for, I don't know, like the past 10 years, a two millimeter barefoot shoe, probably not the best place to start. I mean, it's kind of like if someone who has never run a day in their life just got up one day and decided to sprint their way through a full marathon. I mean, it certainly can be done, but like 10 out of 10 would not recommend. Most people train pretty extensively for this kind of wear and tear on the body with the intent to avoid injuries. So then how do we essentially train the muscles in our feet to do the same thing when we move to a very full support to barely their shoe? And the answer here really lies in the transition. If you want to start the transition, you'd want to say, okay, the orthotics are maybe the first thing you need to take out. Same shoe, no orthotic. That hurts me to say that, to recommend that, but that's probably what you should try first. 
and then you want to get something that's like you know a middle ground between these two not something like a vibram or even a vivo it would be maybe too aggressive and i know that kind of sucks but maybe like a nike free it's still got like a tiny toe box that's going to mess up your toes and stuff but it's it's a huge jump right so then you you'd want to run in those nike freeze a couple times and see how that feels maybe oversize them a little bit so you've got a little more space for the feet to move so if you follow skip's protocol that's a heck of a lot of steps involved before you get to that barefoot destination. So just how long does this whole process have to take? And here's where his answer really surprised me. If you're doing the dojo stuff, you're doing the six zone assessment, you're doing regular prehabbing, you could probably switch in two months. If you're not doing that, I'd give it two years. Oof. Okay, so you're now maybe wondering, well, what the heck is prehabbing? And better yet, how does it expedite this transition? And I guess no better time to get into this a little bit, but essentially prehabbing is a type of neuromuscular exercise, or as my friend Kaka Camera loves to call it. It's meditation for your muscles, mindfulness for your muscles. And as you'll see a little bit here, prehabbing involves a series of tiny isometric contractions and low impact exercises designed to strengthen your body, not by physical exertion, but by creating better mind and muscle connections. Now, this really is fascinating stuff and I can't possibly do it justice in this short video. So if you wanna learn more about the Thrive Dojo and what prehabbing entails, I highly recommend you check out the intro video. And if you do wanna sign up for the course, there is a special discount code using the link in the description below. But coming back to the shoes and let's talk potential health benefits because there's a ton of conflicting information out there about these kind of shoes and even just running barefoot. This 2014 PubMed article cites a lack of high quality evidence to make any conclusions about the risks or benefits of running barefoot, shod, or in minimalist shoes. But then fast forward six years later and another article in PubMed from 2020 found that walking with minimalist shoes showed better gait performance than simply walking barefoot and this study actually looked at two separate age groups people in their 20s and people in their 70s so what gives <laughs> and here's where i think someone like skip can really shed some light here i mean given his decade-long experience studying biomechanics working as a trainer with olympic athletes and my god healing his own broken foot that was broken in three places i had to ask him well what is the real problem with walking around in full support shoes. This is technology moving your foot instead of you moving your foot. But what's, what are the downsides? Well, the downsides are eventually you won't be able to move without all these different assistances. So there's lots of things like that, but the benefits to, to running barefoot, your foot is going to get tougher the mechanics, the beautiful, there's 55 joints in the foot. They're gonna be able to move fluidly together as you get older so that you just have that beautiful resilience that the feet can have so that you can start from a place of no support. And as you get into your 80s and 90s, maybe you need a little bit of support. You can then add support rather than starting from a place of ultimate support and trying to go further than that, then then it's surgery. You know, then it's becoming more cyborg because what's more than this? And that's rods and iron inside of your feet or titanium or vibranium or whatever we're working with by then. Now I get that is a lot to unpack and digest. And if I'm being honest, it's still hard for me to grasp that we live in a world in which both these and these are packaged and sold to consumers with the same exact promise. These are better for your long-term foot health. But then again, who would have ever thought it'd be considered healthy to put butter in your coffee? I mean, 10 years ago, that would have been blasphemy. And now it is literally a menu option at your local Whole Foods. So I guess my point is this, times change as do trends. It's important to be skeptical and it's important to do your research, but it's equally as important to just have an open mind. And so knowing what I know now about the biomechanics of your foot and seeing some of this new research emerge on minimalist footwear really does give me the confidence to 
actually begin this transition the right way. And so I invite you guys to help me decide on what's the best pair to try by leaving a comment below. And of course, I'll be following up with my own progress with these shoes, along with my results from the Thrive Dojo course along the way. And again, all of these links will be in the description below. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. And as for the rest of the stuff, you guys know the drill, the subscribe button, the notification bell, all the things. And until then, I cannot wait to catch you guys on the next one.